Hi everyone. In this last video about measurements and uh, systems of units, the last thing I want to talk about is just how uh, a lot of times we communicate the measurements that we make uh, in terms of the units that we learn already. Okay. So um, in chemistry as well as in other uh, subjects in the sciences, we study you know many different things, and uh, specifically in chemistry, we study matter, which is something that has mass and uh, you know it has uh, some velocity. Now, it turns out that matter can range from something that's really small, okay, like atomic nuclei, atoms, you know, so we want to know particles that are in atoms, particles that are in forming atomic nuclei, to things that are very large, like planets, the sun, you know, stars, and so on. So it's in between these guys, of course, there's a lot of other things that we can study, okay. So a lot of times it's not convenient to write all the numbers out. If you're talking about things that are really large, for example, if you have uh, a mass that's a billion kilogram, for example, you know, it's not very convenient to say one zero 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 and nine zeros following it. Okay, it's just too many uh, zeros and it's not uh, uh, presenting it with just confused people because a lot of times people might make a mistake in interpreting that number. Um, so similarly with things that are very small, we don't want to write point zero 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 one uh, for something that's really small because again it's for the same reason for things that are really big. So what we do is we ex try to express these type of measurements with two different ways that basically simplify the presentation and once you look at the number or you look at the unit that's given with the number you immediately know what it is you're talking about in terms of size. Okay. So two ways to do this is one is scientific notation and the second way to do this is to use metric prefixes, okay, because we're going to be using the metric system for our units. So the prefixes will be attached to these metric units, and then you can learn how, uh, you know, what each prefix mean. Okay, let's first talk about scientific notation. So I'm going to go to the next slide right now. So scientific notation is a fairly simple idea. The idea here is that, let's say you have something like a bacterium uh, cell, okay. So let's say you have a bacterium uh, let's say the length is uh, expressed in terms of, uh, uh, you know, very small number, in this case, 0. 0.00001 meter, okay? Now, this is, a, like I said earlier, a lot of times inconvenient to write. So what we do if we want to express it in terms of uh, scientific notation is we write it as the first number that's non-zero, okay, which is 1 in this case, and you just say that in terms of how, you know, we'll talk about precision later on, but in terms of how precise this was measured, let's say it's only measured up till uh, the first decimal, so then it will be 1.0 times, um, and you just count back as far as uh, when that decimal will go to the 1 here. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, so it takes 6 uh, movement before you get to 1.0, so then it's 10, because this is smaller than one number, it's 10 to the minus 6, okay? And then you just write meter here. So that's uh, the scientific notation. It's as simple as that. If we're talking about some other uh, object, let's say maybe the uh, volume is, uh, you know, 0. Uh, 0.00245, uh, you know, cubic centimeter, for example, okay? The converted to scientific notation, you would just, again, go up till you reach the first non-zero number which is 2 okay so you say 2.45 in this case 2.45 times and because we went one two three ways to get to that 2 then it would just be 2.45 times 10 to the negative 3 cubic centimeter now you can do this with big numbers as well um, for example you can say you know one of the numbers you'll encounter quite a bit is Avogadro's number which has this following scientific notation, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles uh, per mole of substance. Okay, so so these are ways to write scientific notation immediately as, as you know, the, the, the way this is simpler than looking at these numbers because once you look at this exponent component of the scientific notation, you immediately know that this is a very small number. In fact, it's, you know, 10 to the minus 6. So if I were to, let's say, compare this size to something Somebody tell me that I have uh, another object that's, you know, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 meter. 
by comparing these two numbers, I can quickly uh, tell that once one object is, you know, related to the other object is 10 to the third, right, which is about, a, which is a thousand times. So in other words, one object is a thousand times bigger than the other one, or this object is a thousand times smaller than that one, okay? So that's kind of the, the uh, advantage of dealing with scientific notation is you can quickly kind of convert between these or have an idea of how much bigger, how much smaller one object is where, uh, with respect to the other one. Now let's talk about the metric system uh, prefixes, okay? Uh, in addition to using scientific notation, you can also, uh, instead of having the number multiplied by 10 to the minus 6, for example, you can also use a system of prefixes that are attached to your metric unit that will tell you that that's 10 to the minus 6, okay? So this is, there's, there's really no way around this but memorizing this uh, because it's just kind of a, a definition, okay? So for example, a centi by definition is uh, 0.01 or 10 to the minus 2 of our base unit. The base unit here is indicated by the, um, the base, you know, prefix, which there's no prefix for the base unit, is indicated by the uh, dash right here. So for example, uh, the way you would use a, a table of prefixes like this is that if uh, a meter, in this case, is your base unit for length, right, you're talking about a centimeter, that means a centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 uh, meter. Okay, and a nanometer would be 10 to the minus 9 meter and so on. And then a terameter would be something like 10 to the 12 meters. Okay, so that's how you, you're going to use this. So, for example, uh, our example earlier was on this bacterium that is um, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meter, right? So if you think about it, which, how would you express, this, uh, express that length in the uh, prefixes? Uh, would be to say that the length of the bacterium is one micrometer or a lot of times micrometer is shown as micron but one micrometer corresponds to one times 10 to the minus six meter uh, and so as a result you can say the bacterium is either one micron one micrometer or one times 10 to the minus six meter all of those uh, tell you the same size okay so uh, I expect you to be uh, to know all of these prefixes to memorize all of them um, as far as the largest size, probably will will only go up to giga, so you don't have to worry about these ones in this class. And the smallest size, you have to go uh, all the way to femto. Uh, but aside from that, you know those are those have to be memorized. There's just no way around this. Okay, so you have to know this uh, by heart. Okay, so that's the end of our uh, prefixes. Uh, you know, discussion about units, systems of measurements, and so on. Um, in the next series of videos, we'll talk about, you know, just basic concepts in chemistry. You know, what, what we consider as properties, physical properties, chemical properties, reactions, and so on. Since this is the first series of videos that you're watching, I want to remind you, don't forget that right next to this uh, set of videos, you'll see a questionnaire, uh, which is usually multiple choice. And what you have to do is make sure you complete that questionnaire before the deadline for this lecture, because we're going to meet... Um, tomorrow or you know when when this lecture is scheduled we're going to meet and discuss the concepts that I talk about in all of these videos the three four videos that you just watch and so you want to make sure that you um, you know have your notes down from all of the concepts I talked about and then complete that questionnaire so we can have a uh, informed discussion about the topics okay you don't want to just show up without watching these videos because that um, then you'll be completely confused because I would just go through the concept in class very quickly okay